not give her from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of his people be. Now this evening we have come to gather before the Lord to hear the word of God. First of all, we want to thank God for the man of God that God is going to use. God has been using him already, our pastor, Pastor Dobev Kumi. God has been using him to nourish us with the word of God time and time again. And yet again this evening, we are going to receive again from the man of God. Let's thank God for the man of God who he has been using. And let's pray tonight that the Lord will grant him auction. Auction that he will speak the word of God with boldness. And there will be fresh anointing to teach us again. Tonight, there will be revelation of the word of God, and as the Lord reveals himself unto us, we will heed the commands of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In John chapter 6, in verse 44, the Bible says, No man come here to me except the Father draws him, and tonight you have come to the presence of the Lord. You are going to pray and tell God that the Lord will help you. You will see Jesus today that the Lord himself will draw you to his presence. The Lord will draw his church nearer to him through his word, the word which we will hear today. That the, the word we will hear today, none of this word will fall to the ground and become unfruitful. Pray for yourself that your heart will be a fertile ground, that the word which you hear will profit you. You are not going to be dull of hearing. You know, you have been hearing it again and again. It looks like you have a very big note that you have been writing over and again, and it seems as if we are familiar tonight that the Lord will help us. will not be too familiar with his word. The word will profit us, that your eyes will be open. Your eyes will be open. There will be revelation from his word. There will be illumination from the word. There will be insight, and the Lord will give you understanding from the word. The Lord will give you direction, and you will have complementary and complete obedience. Everything that we hear, we will respond and say, all oh, that the Lord has commanded us, we will do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because of the privilege you have given unto us to come to your presence again. Lord, we are praying tonight that you will open our eyes and you will teach us out of your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that the word which we hear tonight will profit us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please let's be seated. Let's remember that there should be no clapping when we call the visitors and the newcomers uh, and after the choir administration. And as we comply, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you for bringing us into your presence this evening to be blessed of you and to learn at your feet. Father, we pray that you will fill our empty vessels to overflowing tonight in Jesus' name. You prepare our hearts even as we praise you even this evening in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. As we offer, as we offer unto thee. The sacrifice seas of tens given as we offer unto thee. The sacrifice seas of praise. Hallelujah, we bring the of praise into the house of the of the Lord. Into the house of the Lord as we offer the sacrifice, O seas of tens given as we offer unto thee. 
Blessings and honor and glory and praise and glory and praise and glory and praise. Blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And praise, and praise. Oh, blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And praise, and praise. Oh, blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ. I lift up Jesus, he is King of kings. Lift up Jesus, he is Lord of lords. Lift up Jesus, he is King of kings, King of kings. And Lord of Lords, let us lift him up. Oh, he is King of Kings, and he is Lord of Lords. Oh, he is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, let us lift him up. He is Lord of Lords, lift up Jesus. He is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. All the way to Calvary, He went for me. He went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary, He went for me he died to set me free hallelujah he went for me he went for me all the way All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he went for me, he went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to set me free. Hallelujah. Oh, he went for me. He went for me, all the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to set me, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus is the way, is the truth, and the life, oh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. Oh, the truth and the life. Yes. Is the truth and the life. Oh, Jesus is the way. He's the truth and the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. He is the truth and the life. The truth and the life. I'll live for Jesus day after day. I'll live for Jesus. Yes, come what may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus 
day after day, day after day, day after day, I'll live for Jesus. Yes, come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day, day after day. Day after day, yes, come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey, I'll live for Jesus, day after day, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask, to be like Him, all through life journey from head to glory all i ask to be like him to be like him to be like jesus all i ask to be like him all through life journey from head to glory all i ask to be like jesus to be like jesus all i ask to be like him all through life journey all i ask Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day. 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 Higher every day. Higher every day. Higher every day. Oh, higher every day. 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 I have every day, I have every day. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I will follow him. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Oh, anywhere, everywhere, I will follow him. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow, follow him. Oh, anywhere, everywhere, I will follow him. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, keep me burning till the close of day. Keep me burning. Oh Lord, I pray. Give me oil, keep me burning, O oh Lord. 
Give me all I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the close of. Give me oil. Amen. The Lord will keep us burning to the close of day in the name of Jesus. Uh, we want to welcome every one of us to the Bible study today again. And I'm trusting the Lord that we will not go back the same way we came in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to specially welcome all our retreats and GCK converts, our invitees and visitors uh, who are coming to the headquarters for the very first time. So, if today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, or you are one of the converts from the GCK or the retreat, uh, please can you signify by raising your hand wherever you are seated. Please raise your hand. Uh, you are in the midst of people who love you and who are happy that you are here. Uh, please raise your hand. Uh, please, if I don't see you, kindly rise to your feet wherever you are seated. If today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, uh, converts from the GCK, uh, visit us. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. I pray that today is your first time. It will not be your last time in Jesus' name. Uh, our GS, our general superintendent, that's Pastor W.F. Kumi, is very delighted that you are here with us. Uh, we are also very happy that you are fellowshipping with us, and our GS bid me welcome you specially. And I'm trusting God that as God has been using him to be a source of blessing to us, it will also be a source of blessing to you in the name of Jesus. Our ushers are beside you. They will give you a slip of paper. Kindly fill the information required. Please fill in capital letters uh, so that we can, uh, it can be very legible. I return to the ushers and you can please be seated. Thank you and God bless you. Our weekly meetings. Three times we meet every week. Uh, on Monday like this, we meet for our Bible study which is a time of systematic and expository study. And the Bible study is taken by our general superintendent, the person of Pastor Dobe F. Kumi, and it starts by 5.45. So next week, Monday, we have Old Surulere District will be joining Bagada, K2, and Shomolu uh, Old District for their Bible study here in Bagada at 5.45. On Thursday, we meet for our Thursday Revival and Evangelism Training Service. It's a time where we are being revived and uh, we are being taught how to go out on evangelism. Every first and third Thursday of the month, we have the Supernatural Night of Wonders. And the next edition comes up on Thursday, 18th of April, 2024, at 5.30. Please let's commence publicity and invite our friends and neighborhoods, our, co our colleagues uh, in our neighborhoods. Let's invite them to join us so that they will experience the supernatural wonder of the Lord in their life. And on Sundays, we meet for our Sunday worship service. Every time we meet on Sunday is a time where we have enriching worship service. Uh, next week, Sunday, we will be having our service group, two brethren, uh, will be coming here for their combined worship service, and the time is 7.45 a.m., while those in service group one will be worshiping in their various district and church location at 7.45 a.m. Now, our Tuesday leadership development. Tomorrow, which is Tuesday, all our Tuesday leaders will be meeting here in Bagada for the Tuesday leadership development at 5.15 p.m. So let's take notes. Tomorrow, our Tuesday, leaders meet, our Tuesday leaders meeting will hold here for all our leaders. Now we have the Global Crusade with Kumui and the April edition of the GCK with the theme, Glorious Transformation Through Christ will be hosted by Abia State, and it will come up on Thursday, 25th to Tuesday, 30th of April, 2024, in Abia State. And it will also feature ministers, church workers, and professional conference, which will be on the 26th, 29th, 30th of April, 2024, with the theme, Strength for a Fainting Minister. 
all our workers and uh, workers in training, our professionals, are to attend this conference in our various group headquarters at 8 a.m. every day. Let's take note of this. And also, we'll be having the Impact Academy for our teenagers, our campus students, our core members, and young adults on Saturday, the 29th of April, 2024. And the theme of the Impact Academy is Prevailing Stars. The program will start at 8 a.m. Let's do well to start publicity, invite our friends and our colleagues and our neighbors. And as we do so, the Lord will bless us and them together in the name of Jesus. Please let's rise to our feet as we take our congregational songs. We'll be singing from our gospel and psalm song, hymn number 52, Count Me. When you count the ones who love the Lord, count me, count me. When you count up those who trust his word, count me, count me. When you count up those who are saved by grace, count me, count me. Who are found in Christ the hiding place, count me, count me. When you count up those who do the right, count me, count me. Who are walking in the gospel light, count me, count me. When you count up those who forward press, count me, count me. Who shall gain the crown of righteousness, count me, count me. Count me with the children of the heavenly king. Count me with the servant who would serve his bring. Count me with the ransomed who his praises sing. Count me, count me.
Today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. Chapter 11. Chapter 11. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Taberah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of delium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them, that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth a sucking child, unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh, that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out at your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh, that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them, to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them, to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out, 
and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud, and spake unto him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that, when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man, and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Enviest thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? And Moses gat him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hateva, because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kibroth Hateva unto Haziroth, and abode at Haziroth. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. We shall remain standing as we give our tithes and offering. Uh, I read to you in the book of Luke chapter 6 in verse 38. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down. And shaking together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met, with all it shall be measured to you again. Let's uh, raise our tithe and offering, all that we have brought to offer unto the Lord as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you because of the privilege you have given unto us to give unto you. Whatever it is that we give unto you, you have given unto us. Lord, we pray and ask that you accept our token our sacrifices this evening in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you use it for the propagation of the gospel and the expansion of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please drop your title.
despite I want my life to exemplify Jesus more and more and more more and more and more more and more and more like Jesus Christ
wants more, Lord. He wants more, Lord. Can you give us more of you, Lord? Please help us, Master. We cannot do it on our own. Do it by the grace of God. More and more and more. More like Jesus. More and more and Our more. Our attitude more. demeanor. More and more and more. more. I'll bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
puissance me vanterai oh Faible lueur de sagesse humaine Pas du tout. Je me vanterai de connaître Christ à la croix Je confesse des choses merveilleuses Ma valeur et mon indignité Mon fils est ma rançon Whatsoever 
He says unto you, Go it. And as we pray, I mentioned the name of Jesus. Your miracle will meet you there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us because He has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And as the final amen, if you are live, the power of God is moving about, touching everyone. Anything that is causing pain, disease there, just lay your hand, raise up the other hand, a miracle is coming your way. With this mandate in hand, we are on a journey to every corner of the world, conveying the gospel to every creature in riches, hardship, merriment, knocking on their doors, spreading the sufficiency of Jesus with the joy of the Lord in abundance. But there is another kind of yearning, a thirst in the soul for something deeper. To seize the people's search for something to fill the void in their minds, Jesus has gone ahead to prepare the grounds of Abba Abia State, Nigeria, for a glorious transformation through Christ. From the 25th to the 30th of April 2024, at 1600 hours GMT, every evening and on Sunday at 0700 hours GMT. Live in Abba Mega Mall, beside Abba New Park, Osisioma Enugu Portakot Expressway, Abba. The power of the Lord is set to turn around the lives of all and sundry, and He is ready to perfect the affairs of all men, prepping change makers in the society and the world at large. Through his servant, Pastor Dr. W. F. Komuyi. Healing, health, miracle, wonders, through the furtherance of the gospel, lives will be turned around in Jesus' name. The city of Abba is about to witness the birth of prevailing stars in their schools, campuses, offices, orientation comes, youths that will become godly catalysts in this present world. Presenting the Impact Academy for Youths on the 27th of April 2024 at 0600 hours GMT at Abba Mega Mall beside Abba New Park Osisioma and Nugu Potakot Expressway Abba. For every minister passing through a tough face in the journey of faith, for everyone seeking to grow in the journey of ministry, we bring to you the Ministers and Young Professionals Conference titled Strength for a Fainting Minister from the 26th, 29th and 30th of April 2024 at 0700 hours GMT at Abba Mega Mall beside Abba New Park, Osisioma and Nugu Portakot Expressway, Abba. God is there already. We are ready. Abba Abia State, are you ready? You know how weak a baby will be. And you know that's why the mother will concentrate on that baby, feed the baby, fellowship of the baby, help the baby to grow up, strengthen the baby. That's exactly the result of follow up. When people, first of all, when they come to the Lord, they are babes in Christ. And that's the time for you to nurture them, train them in the way they should go. So that when they become older Christians, they will not depart from it. Now, if somebody has just become born again, and then you bring him to church. But even though they are hearing the word of God in the church, something is missing. They do not know how to have quiet time, how to wake up in the morning, have quiet. Nobody ever told them. And they live their Christian lives by the grace of God from what they are hearing in the Bible study at the Sunday fellowship at the Thursday meeting. Since they started coming to the church, they are finding their way and they are trying to plant their feet in the kingdom. And on their own, they will say, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm living the life. And they live, they do the best they can, but quiet time is missing. Then one day, maybe three years after being born again, and they'll be coming to church, there's a message on reading your Bible every day and praying every day. 
and they hear it now. But remember, he has been a Christian born again child of God for three years. He has not been having that regular quiet time. Nobody ever told him. And he's going to have real difficulty because it's now, it's already his habit not to have quiet time. And the quiet time will not be something he can just pick up like that. But if when he was very young, when he was just a day old, a week old, you went to him and you said, you know, there's something called quiet time. A time of quietness when you shut out all the noise around you and then you go into the watch of God. You just read a few verses. Here is something you can use. We call it daily manna. Here is something you can use higher every day. And then he's reading that from that young age. When he just came to know the Lord, he has started a quiet time. You'll find after 10 years in the Lord, he doesn't miss his quiet time because that's the way he was brought up when he was very, very young. Now you've made up your mind, you know, you must follow up. You must go to them. Personal contact. We're personally contacting them. We ought to, we must. And we must do it with urgency. They may be tracts. They may be books. They may be daily reading material that was sent to them. Maybe a good Bible with a good concordance. We, we decide to buy it for them so that they'll be able to grow and develop appropriate audio things. You are sending it to them, or it may be CD that was sending to them. You know, there are people that may have the wrong attitude. Well, they have done the preaching, and those people have come to the Lord. If they want to finish their work, let them do the follow-up themselves. It doesn't always work that way. We have done the preaching, and those people have come to know the Lord. It's now in your hand. You go and do the follow-up. That's how we have to do the follow-up. These are children. These are newcomers. These are babes in Christ. And you'll be gentle among those newcomers, and you'll be nursing them, cherishing them. You'll appreciate them. And you will make them to feel very important. You rejoice with any little discovery they make in the word of God. It may look ordinary to you. It says, uh, I, I thank God you came. I was reading something in the Bible this morning. And you think it's going to be a great, great revelation. And it says, uh, you know, I, I saw this in the word of God. And it points to the verse. And it's a very common verse to you. You must rejoice with him. This is a new discovery. Because this is a little child. And this is a little babe. And you are cherishing and nourishing him. When you do follow up, you will not go with a tired look. A tired voice. A tired, worn-out personality, as if they gave me the cash, and what can I do if I don't come now, I'll be feeling guilty. Be excited. Let this fellow know that he's very precious and very dear unto you, and you cherish them and you nourish them. And I'm doing it with all joy and happiness. I pray you will keep them. And they will not be lost. And on the final day, according to your consecration, commitment, and vow, they will be with the Lord and be with us together in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Why don't you talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I will do it. I've heard your word. I commit myself to you. Let's pray for more grace to be the doers of the world. What we are just listening to is a timely exhortation reminding us of our urgent responsibility to the young converts. Follow her is a must if our labor is to be preserved. If the labor, if the fruit of our labor is to be preserved, we must intensify our follow-up. The young converts require our presence for them, for us, to help them. Follow-up is a must and is very urgent. Must because it is through our follow-up that our fruits, all our efforts in the retreat, in the GCK, will be in vain if we don't follow up the new converts. Let's pray that God will help us to be the doer of what we are just listening to. We must intensify our follow-up. Follow-up require patience, passion, and prayer. We must look away 
from all form of distractions we are going to encounter in the process of our follow-up. Let's pray. We need, the, we need God's grace, God's help to sustain our follow-up. Follow-up, we need to do it on a regular basis. Everybody has to be follow-up. Follow-up, our little children, the children in the, in the children's church who gave their life, the youths, the adults, even the campus, all of them must be follow up. And let us remind ourselves again as we pray that God will help us to fulfill our purpose in follow up. We are not just visiting them to see how they are doing. No. Our purpose is to help them stand. Stand in time of persecution. In our follow up, we need to instruct the converts, let them know that persecution is certain and that their component, their conduct in times of persecution is very important. Let them also know that the presence of God is with them. More than that, in our follow-up, we need to instruct them on how to study the Bible. We need to instruct them on how to Go in faith. That is where personal quiet time comes in. Instruct them. Give them materials. Let's pray. God will help us to be able to meet up with this great responsibility in following up the new convert. Follow her is very important. We need to teach them. Not only how to stand in times of persecution, not only how to study the scripture, we need to teach them the importance of supplication, prayer, seeking the face of God. Very, very important. These are one of those, these are some of those things we need to instruct them in our follow-up. The grace of God is very, very important. The grace of God is also very, 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 very sufficient for every one of us. God will help us. Pray and let us ask for more grace. See the face of God. Of course, we might have disappointed God in the past. But right now, God is expecting all to recommit ourselves. God is expecting all to reconsecrate ourselves. God is expecting all to refocus. God is expecting us to be tenacious. We need to be tenacious in our follow-up because situation will come to discourage us. Situation will come to make us give up. We must not. We cannot give up. Just like a nursery mother, a nursery mother cannot give up. The nursery, the racing up, the little baby, the grace of God is very much sufficient for us. We must intensify our follow-up. The law is going to help us. The law is going to assist us. Let's seek the face of God so that our labor will not be in vain. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, as we are already planning, our Father in the law, is already getting ready for another GCK at Abia State. Let's ask God, let's pray the God of heaven will prepare him. The God of heaven will assist him to give the best. And more than that, let us pray for the Alpha location. God will also help them to get fully ready and they shall lack nothing. The grace of God is very sufficient. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you very much for the privilege we have to serve you. We thank you for the past help we have received in this work as we have just received information, exhortation on follow-up. Help every one of us in all the various parts of the state, here in Nigeria, and in all the states 
all over the world in Jesus' name. We pray, dear Lord, that where we are becoming weary, help us to revive our desire. Thank you very much. As our, our Father in the Lord is getting ready for another GCK, we pray your hand will be mighty upon him. And in our Alpha location, every one of us will be heard. We believe you. We are grateful to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name. The Lord appreciates your coming. And you also need to appreciate your coming. The Bible study is the backbone of the believer. And we thank the Lord who has seen us through having the Bible study all these years from 1973 till date. And I pray that until we see him face to face, we will continue studying his word, learning his word, and living by that word in Jesus' name. Bring your whole family. Tell your friends, tell our members, tell those who do not understand the importance of the Bible study. Impress it on them. They'll come with you. I said he'll come with you. And the Lord will reward you for such a service in Jesus' name. Father, well, thank you for bringing us to the Bible study. It's your spirit that has kept the interest in us. And we pray the working of the spirit will never leave us in Jesus' name. As we study today, implant your word, your nature, and the life of Christ in every one of us in Jesus' name and confirm every promise in your word, every provision in your word, every proclamation in your word, confirm each in every life, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Headquarters, amen, before you sit down. We're coming to James chapter 2. And from James chapter 2, we're reading from verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons, with partiality. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile remage. Tells us in verse 3, it says, And ye have respect to him that wears the gay, good, shining clothing, and say unto him, See thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Verse 4, are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? In verse 5, it says, Hakim, my beloved brethren, have not, as not God chosen, the poor of this world reach in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, but ye have despised the poor. Do not reach men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. Verse 7, in verse 7 it says, do, do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye 
are called is asking a lot of questions a number of questions to make us think and to make us see the way we accept the faith believe the faith was delivered unto the saints and the way we practice what we learn from the faith was delivered unto the saints when the bible says you are earnestly content for the faith was delivered unto the saints it's talking about the teaching about the doctrines about the revelations about everything connected with the faith in christ and now he's uh, asking uh, the believers is writing to the way you practice the way you do and the way you act your character does it show that you have a balanced understanding a balanced approach to the faith to the word the lord has revealed and is telling us having respect of persons having partiality and either in the word of god you accept this or reject that you accept that person you reject that person or you do well to another person and then you relegate other people to the background it says if you're living like that you are taking the faith of jesus christ with respect of persons if your obedience to the lord depends on the official appearances of people if your goodness if your righteousness if your practical life depends on what you see of them how high they are how low other people are and if it's when you you know he makes me feel good he honors me he respects me he knows how to lift up somebody so i will bench to him i will honor him i will apply the word of god when he talks to me but he he doesn't care for anybody he just looks and he goes on and also show special respect unto me so i will not obey the word of god when it comes to him or even comes from him he's saying do you have the real faith, the genuine faith, the transparent faith, the faith that shows that what you care for is the Word of God, is the revelation of the Word of God? Are you just are you acting as if you really don't have the faith, but you show respect of persons? That's why we're looking at the teaching of the Word of God today, the scripture based impartiality of true brethren in Christ, in Christ. Uh, coming to Christ when you are born again, when you give your life to the Lord, when he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in unto him, you in him and he in you, in Christ. Brethren, those who are brothers and sisters, in the family of God, Jesus Christ said, These who hear the word of God and do it, they are my mother, my brother, my sister. We form the family of God because we do the word of God. We're looking at Him, we're seeing Him, we're obeying Him, and we're following the very steps of Christ. Then we we'll become brothers and sisters in the family of god sons and daughters of god brethren in christ true brethren in christ the false brethren they say they are born again their life doesn't show it the false brethren they look at the word of god they do not have the true faith in christ the penetration of the word of god is not in them they are false but the people who are true that the people that know Christ are their personal savior. They're the people that know Christ and they know the word of Christ and live by the word of Christ. They're nominal Christian, they're church going Christian, they're superficial Christian. There are people who do not have the spirit of God bearing witness in their hearts that their children of God 
God does not reckon with them, we don't reckon with them too. But the people who are born again, the new creatures in Christ, all things have passed away and all things have become new. They are the true brethren in Christ. How do they live? They live in a Bible-based impartiality. They do not take one part of the word of God and then reject the other part. They have impartiality because the true brethren in Christ tonight, the scripture based impartiality of true brethren in Christ. We're looking at three things in the study today. Number one, the blessed faithfulness and impartiality of the Lord of glory. That's of Jesus Christ himself. The Lord of glory. He is the one we follow. He is a perfect example. He is our model. And he says we'll walk in the steps of Christ. And he has the blessed faithfulness and impartiality. And we live after his perfect example. Number two, the brotherly fellowship brotherly fellowship without partiality living by his gospel number three the blameless followers with perseverance of the life of godliness let's look at number one number one the blessed faithfulness and impartiality of the Lord of glory. In James chapter 2, reading here from verse 1, my brethren, brethren, actually James, the writer of this epistle, he calls brethren, 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 a lot of times to show he wasn't writing to sinners, he was writing to the people who know the Lord, who love the Lord, and who love the word of God, and they live by the word of God. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. He calls Jesus Christ the Lord of glory. The Lord of, is the Lord of grace, is the Lord of godliness, is the Lord of the godly, and the Lord of glory. The Lord of glory with respect of persons. He wants us to understand that Christ, the Christ we follow, is an impartial Christ. The Christ we follow is the one that followed the Father through and through without any partiality. Look at three things here. We're looking at uh, number one, the God of glory impartial without respect of persons number two the lord of glory perfectly free from respect of persons number three the lifters of his glory impartial without respect of persons look at number one number one is the lord of glory impartial without respect of persons we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 2 acts chapter 7 verse 2 and he said men brethren fathers hacking the god of glory appeared unto a father abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charan, this God the Father referred to as the God of glory. And God the Son, Jesus Christ, referred to as Lord of glory. I and my Father are one. One in nature, one in attributes. And one in glory. I and my Father, as the Father God in heaven is referred to as the God of glory. So Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, is also referred to as the Lord of glory. Hey, look at Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 7. In Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 7, wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. 
take heed and do it for there is no iniquity with the lord our god no respect of persons nor taking of bribes because he's god of glory and because he's lord of glory no bribery no corruption you'll expect that if somebody is holy there'll be no bribery or corruption if somebody is holy and righteous god is holy he cannot have he cannot accept he cannot think of taking bribes from people there are people that think they'll bribe god with whatever and some people think they'll bribe god with fasting they're living in sin they're living against the word of God. But they think they'll bribe God with fasting. Other people think they'll bribe God with calling him some big, big names. They think God is like man. When you call them by those special titles and by those special names, their heads swell up and they're proud. They think God is like that. You cannot bribe God with any of those uh, things. Other people think they can bribe God with money. They bring back their bags, their money bags, and then they bring, uh, if your life is not right, if your life is wicked, crooked, or evil, sinful, you cannot bribe God with anything because He, the Lord of glory, and he doesn't take bribe, he doesn't have respect of persons. Deuteronomy chapter 10, reading from verse 17. Deuteronomy 10 verse 17, for the Lord your God is God, the God of gods, and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor take it reward it does not regard the physical natural beauty of a man of a woman absalom was more handsome than anybody in the land but his handsomeness or his beauty did not bribe god that fellow still died as a rebellious son and went to the other side whatever we have in the natural however we look in the natural it does not make god to honor us if there's no repentance if there's no faith in christ if there is no righteousness in our lives acts chapter 10 we're reading here from verse 34 then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. And if we believers are truly children of God, and God bears witness with your heart, you are a child of God, we will live like he lived will apply the standard of the Bible in the same uniform way with everybody. What God says, he does. And if we are children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, if we are ministers of the gospel, if we are